women have been doing their hair since Africa, since Egypt. So it's, they are not like the or, originators of black hair care. Black women have always had amazing hairstyles and have created products. So it was a huge deal to be able to have your own business, work your own hours, be certified as a professional, be able to make 10 times as much money as you normally would. When a woman looks into the mirror, she wants to like what she sees back, which is why here at Witch of High School is the only school in the state of Illinois to offer a braiding license. Usually you don't get an opportunity like this until you're grown and out of high school. So it's a very unique opportunity. Um, there's no state board test yet. Over 13 years, still no state board. So you have the opportunity for me to work with you until you pass that test and you're able to be certified in a year. As a woman, it's very important to keep up with your image. So learning how to do hair is just a bigger part of your image. Ashani Ford is just one of 20 students here at Woodruff on her way to earn her braiding license. And she's planning on using these skills once she graduates from high school this May. I feel like right now in our generation, braiding hair and doing hair, period, is just really like big. It's a such thing called hair depression, and that is very true. I feel like um, knowing how to do my own hair, it causes me to not have hair depression. This year-long course is made available for any student in the district to earn their official braiding license. A tool, Ms. Simmons says, was hard to get when she grew up in Mississippi and could be further repercussion if they were caught braiding without it. Yeah. Why is it so emotional for you to be able to teach these kids? It wasn't available. I had to become a cosmetologist in order to just braid. So, and if you did, you would get barred or you would get, light, your, um, you'd get fined if they caught you working in a shop without a license. So I knew it was important for me to be licensed. I thank God for being here. It's my passion. So being here, being able to teach them is, I like it. You stand to the side, where's your part gonna go? Okay, cut it. I actually have a cosmetology license as well. Um, so I've held a cosmetology license since 2012. Um, and it was just so important. I walk in and I see the young ladies and they're really into just keeping themselves together and beauty and they want to know how to do those things. And the education has no age limit. Here at Heinz Primary School, these workers are learning how to braid using hair extensions. It was important for me to try to break through, I guess, them knowing what actually cosmetology is about. Um, and so that when they get to the high school level or get to the middle school level, they'll have a little more knowledge to make the decision if they'd like to go to Woodruff further. What the girls are learning at both of these schools will help further their careers and get them started in a workforce even earlier. And they may even have similar business practices like Annie Malone and Madam C.J. Walker, honing their skills and perfecting their craft. They were way more than entrepreneurs. These women were moguls. They were what you call boss. When we, when we think of boss, these women were boss. But what these two women really did was to nationalize the distribution of commercially available hair care products. They were really the giants who helped to establish what we now know as the modern hair care, black hair care industry. Historically, hair salons were also utilized for more than just doing hair. Some of the women who learned from Malone and Walker went to open up shops and use them as safe spaces to have NAACP meetings and raise money for the civil rights movement. We will have both part one and part two of this special available for you on our digital shorts page on our website, 25newsnow.com. <laughs> Since you only have a small amount, you'll go like this.